people, you know, that are in power are ignoring the indigenous side of, you know, knowledge of the land. You know, they only got four years as a politician. They're going to make so much, die within 20 years or 30 years. They don't worry. So they say they're look, going to look after the next generation. Well, I can't see where they're going to look after the next, next generation, the way things are going. And one of the biggest problems we're facing now is the native bee. I see the male bees die. Well, well it's not there no more. Frank Shadforth was born and raised on Seven Emu, an 888 square mile cattle station and wildlife reserve in the Northern Territory of Australia. He says his indigenous knowledge of the land and sugar bag bees was passed down by his ancestors. I think I would be the last indigenous on that hunt and gathered food, because I'm 63 now. Uh, not the last, but in this area anyway. Sugar bag bees are key pollinators of flora across northern and eastern Australia. Shadforth says with less of them around, most of the trees in the area haven't been flowering properly over the last 20 years. He says that's mainly due to the disappearance of the male sugar bag bee. So he lives way up at six metres up and the females, she lived below. And I seem to think a lot of the ground flower and butterfly, they're not even there because of the female not pollinating the tree properly and the bottom, you know, flowers and stuff. If you look at the river system, the river system here, the flying fox come up that river four times a year, pollinating. And the gum trees, they pollinate, they have flowers now. And they don't have flowers no more. And the flying fox, he pollinate at six in the afternoon, he start at six in the afternoon, till six in the morning he goes back. What happened when he fly back six o'clock in the morning, the birds come into them flowers and pollinate. Then at seven, it's a male bee come around and pollinate. So it's a cycle. Then you got butterflies and all that other little insect pollinating. But now you don't see that no more. According to several reports, ecosystems around the world are in serious trouble. 25% of eucalypt species, hundreds of native bee species in the USA, and 40% of insect species are faced with extinction. As for insects, they're responsible for pollinating 90% of flowering plant species around the world. Or well, even the parrots, you know the parrots, the lorikeet? Well, they should be squealing everywhere. There's a bird we call gulbugu. Now that word is gulbugu, he's a bird that lives up in a, you know, taking honey, nectar and that. You don't see that bird no more, and that disappeared in the last five years, ten years. Shadforth says he's witnessed feral European honeybees attack and kill male native bees. He also says the honeybee takes too much nectar and doesn't pollinate native plants properly. Whereas with the old Aborigine bee or the native bee, you see what he's doing? He share with all the bird and insect and the flying fox. See, the flying fox... How many flying fox fly up at night? A couple of million? So he pollinate all that area, that tree, within five mile radius. To me, this country is getting off balance pretty quick. And, and you, you look at the flying fox, you go to town, you hear people whinging about the bats they're in town. Well, they don't know why they're in town, because the reason they're in town because they can't get anything outside. To find out what's going on with sugar bag bees, Shadforth wants to connect with someone in the scientific community. He hopes his indigenous knowledge and experience as a hunter-gatherer can help. My mother, not only my mother, but big mob of other old people. We used to hunt and gather for food. A lot of the things she used to tell me, like if you don't hunt or gather the food, a lot of the food will go off. In other words, she used to tell me it'll go jewelwa. Jula means sour. Shadforth is certain finding the male native sugar bag bee will help get the ecosystem back on track. He also hopes more people can get involved in taking care of the land for the next generation.